Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how I built a mini vacuum former out of some scrap MDF, a vacuum cleaner and an old hair dryer. Obviously this doesn't give you the benefits of the economy of scale that a larger vacuum former would, uh, but if you need to make some little vacuum form parts fast and you don't want to spend any money, then this is the perfect project for you. I started by cutting some 5cm squares out of 6mm MDF. I actually only used three of these squares and I needed to find the centre on all three of those. The first square I needed to make a hole in it to fit the vacuum cleaner nozzle which was about 3cm diameter. I also cut a smaller hole in the centre of one of the other squares. I drilled the holes using two differently sized Forstner bits, a 28mm one for the 3cm hole and a 25mm one for the slightly smaller hole. I found that clamping the edges against the side of the desk was the easiest way to do this. It's important that the hole for the vacuum cleaning nozzle is a very tight fit, so I chose a slightly smaller Forstner bit and enlarged the hole using a file and sandpaper until it just about fit the vacuum cleaner nozzle. This smaller 25mm diameter hole will act as a stop to prevent the vacuum cleaner nozzle pulling itself further in once it's created a vacuum inside the former. That's how those two pieces will be arranged once the whole thing is glued together. Next I need to create the actual vacuum mould out of that final piece of MDF that I cut earlier. At the moment I'm making packaging for rings, so I chose a washer which was slightly larger than the outside diameter of the rings and marked around it on some thinner MDF, about 3mm thick. I cut that circle out And then I gradually sanded down the edges using the original washer as a guide. I probably could have made a nicer circle a different way, but this is a video about vacuum formers, not circles. I chose Araldite to glue the whole thing together as it's fairly heat tolerant. And I chose 5 minute Araldite because I'm very impatient. First I glued the 3mm thick circle onto the centre of the base of the mould. Then I glued the piece with the slightly smaller circular hole onto the piece with the slightly larger circular hole. Earlier on in the video I showed 1cm strips of MDF spacing the bottom half of this from the base of the mould. Instead I cut these corner pieces so that the vacuum can act over a larger area of the mould. Now that the circle is bonded to the top of the mould itself, I need to make some holes through it. Um, obviously so that the uh, vacuum can suck down the plastic onto the mould. Um, especially I need to make holes around the edge of the circle because that's where the plastic will need to be kind of sucked in most to, to form around that shape. This was quite a tedious process. I had to make about 50 holes probably in all. It ended up looking like a shower head. Finally, I bonded the mould to the tops of those little corner pieces. You can probably see now why I chose to only use corners rather than 1cm thick strips. I still need to seal those gaps at the side, so I just ran a strip of duct tape around the whole edge of the piece. I find vacuums are a lot easier to seal against than if this was positive pressure because the vacuum will just pull the duct tape in and create an even better seal. 
I just ripped off the bottom of that strip of duct tape to neaten it up a bit. So this part of the project is pretty much ready to go. I'm just testing the way the vacuum feels. Um, feels pretty strong. That's what it does to a fairly thin plastic bag. So these other pieces of MDF will act as a clamp to hold the plastic sheet in place while I'm vacuum forming it. The top one has a hole just over five centimeters long at the sides. And the bottom one is quite a bit larger, maybe six centimetres along the side. I marked out a seven centimetre square on the plastic sheet and cut it out. Just removing the protective sheeting um, just before vacuum forming it. I don't know how that will respond to heat. I decided not to risk ruining the plastic. I don't really use hair dryers, so I don't know if this one is unusually hot, but in previous uh, experiments using it, I managed to melt the end of the plastic nozzle, so it gets pretty boiling. In fact, it was too hot for me to hold that piece by hand, so I used this grip. I probably held the hairdryer onto the plastic for about a minute, and I noticed it was starting to kind of bulge. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video. That was my first try and I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, it's certainly not fast enough if I needed a hundred of these today but just to make a few of the same shape um, it's a very adequate process. I'm just trimming the edges off to get back to that kind of flat moulded base and that will just glue onto a piece of cardboard. I played around with the length of time to heat the plastic and I played around with heating the plastic while it was being pulled by the vacuum. Um, I found you can certainly heat it too much. Um, this was my second attempt and I think the plastic started to melt onto the mould so that was pretty bad. Um, I can't really give any absolute advice about how long to do it but uh, it seems to be something you can kind of get to know by eye after a while of using this machine. Of course the hairdryer got quite hot at one stage so I just used the vacuum cleaner to pull air through it to cool it down um, and then it turned back on again. Anyway, um, obviously this is not the quickest way to vacuum form large quantities of uh, packaging. If I want to make any more packaging in future I'll probably make a, a larger vacuum former maybe a five size using a heater that I have lying around. I think at least I've proved to myself that vacuum forming is not actually that difficult. It may be difficult to do it perfectly but at least to get some kind of results um, was fairly easy. I hope somebody uh, with an obscure need to make packaging finds this video useful. If not at least I hope you enjoyed it and if so uh, please hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you want to see more kind of uh, technical messing around open source electronics uh, CNC router that I'm building at the moment uh, and have been doing so for several months. I actually managed to get the CNC router cutting aluminium today so I'm hoping to get the video about that up on my channel very soon. I haven't come up with a kind of YouTuber catchphrase yet but uh, goodbye. <laughs>